Ever since I was a kid, I had a soft spot for the isometric art style. There's something about it that just draws you in. Escher used them to trick our brains into thinking we understood a perspective. Games used them to create a rich battlefield in which players could get an even view of information. And then there are things like Monument Valley that took the isometric Escher-esque concept and turned it into a game. One day while sleuthing through Affinity, I noticed this option. After toying with it for a bit, I realized that, to put it in gaming terms, this is the most OP tool in Affinity. On my stream lately, I've been having a great time drawing in this isometric perspective, filling out these worlds and taking in suggestions from viewers about what to draw next. Before I get into how this tool works and why I think it's so good, come by and check me out at twitch.tv slash gun. To access this tool, you want to open Affinity Designer, go to View, Studio, then Isometric. Now the first time you open this, it's not going to have any of the options here, so it's going to have a button This is Modify Grid. If we click that, we can go over here and look at this grid and snapping axis pane. There's a lot of options here. You can go to Cube to manually select any kind of perspective you like. You can imagine that this is a single cell in all of your grid. And that if you were creating a building, say, this is the perspective it would take. There's a lot of presets here, so you can go over here and just select isometric like that, and then you have an isometric grid. With all this set up, we can now start drawing in the isometric perspective. We'll start by selecting any shape here, and it really works with any of these shapes, either the basic ones or the advanced ones. But let's just grab a square, and if we hold down the shift key, we can draw a perfectly even square. And then let's go to our isometric pane. We have three faces here. You have our front face, side, and top. And if we click on any of these, we'll see that the grid sort of rotates underneath it, but our object stays the same. What we'll need to do is hit this fit to plane button with our selected face. And the object morphs to that isometric perspective. Isn't that cool? It feels like cheating because you can get everything lined up perfectly with literally just a single click. Let's go back to our shape here for a second. If we click on it and hold down Alt to create a duplicate, we can go back to our isometric tool and we have these other perspectives here. Let's click on side and then do fit to plane. And we'll just drag that to line up and snap. Hold on Alt, drag and click create one more. And this time we'll do front, and we'll fit it to plane and we'll drag it into place. And what we'll see here is that we have something that looks like a 3D shape now, but it doesn't have a lot of substance to it. So. If you think about it as light coming from different perspectives, from the top side and then the other side, you can quickly create something that actually does look like a nice 3D object. It's pretty cool. As an added bit of bonus magic, this thing even works with the advanced shape tools. Let's grab the star tool, for instance, and drag out a shape. Now, we can just automatically rotate this into perspective. But what's cool about this is that these advanced shapes always have these little red handles that change attributes about them. And all these work in perspective. Not bad. A little bit late in the video and editing, I realized my camera was covering the other half of the isometric tool, so I'm gonna quickly cover those things as well. If we take our star shape and we look over here at the other options, there are some other really cool things. Because this has all been made with the isometric tool, we can click on any of these shapes and still take it back into that perspective. It's non-destructive. But we can use these tools, the rotate and the flips, to change it for any of these perspectives. It's really, really nuts uh, what it allows you to do. It's super cool. The entire base of this image, all the underlying geometry, and also a bunch of the characters, was made using this isometric tool. Over the past year, we've drawn a few of these isometric pieces, and they're always so much fun to create. I'd love to hear about the stuff you're making with the isometric tool, and if you have any questions, come by my stream and ask them at twitch.tv slash number one gun. I'd be happy to answer them. Till next time, peace.